Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got another little hover effect for you today. We did one yesterday, it was fairly popular. We've got an image here with the hands in the air. When we hover over it, it's going to have a drop down call to action. People can click on the button. When they get off of it again, it's going to slide back up to reveal the image. And that's a great little eye-catching feature to have on your website. Really easy to do. There's only one tiny little bit of coding we've got to do with this today. We don't let that put you off. Any code I write, I'll put down below the video. And it's really simple. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder so we can build on the front end. OK, and once we're happy, we'll go down to where we want to work. I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside I've got a row, the green tab. And the row's got two columns in it. I'm going to work on the right hand column here. I'm going to hit the little dark button to add a new module. Now this will actually work with any module, but I'm going to use a call to action so they've got a button to drop down. There it is right there. Divi comes as standard with all these light grey modules here. The blue ones are from a free plugin called Divi Supreme Light, adds another 20 plugins. And we've got some more regular Divi ones here. If you've got WooCommerce installed and you're selling products on your site, Divi will give you an extra dozen or so modules to display your products with too. OK, well, let's put a little call to action in. I'll move this across. OK, and by default, the call to action module puts a sort of background color in there, which is fine. OK, and if we look over here, you can put your title in here, whatever you want to say. Whatever you want to, your button to say, just put in right there. And you may have noticed that there's no button there at the moment. That won't show up till we put the link in. I'll do that in a second. Down below, we've got a regular text field where you can add your content. And like any other text field, you can align and justify and bold, italicize, bullet list, add media if you want to, and of course, create titles. I'm going to leave mine on the default here as this is just a demonstration. OK, down below, we've got the link. That's where we put the link in for our button. Put your URL in here where you want to take your visitors. As soon as you put something in there, the button turns up. Always best practice. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site to somebody else's site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. If you want to actually link your module itself, not just the button, the module to something, you can put another link in here or the same link as your button if you want them to be able to click on the, anywhere on the module and go to wherever it is. Same best, best practices apply, obviously. OK, the way this is going to work, I'll just sort of explain it a little bit. We're going to make this and we're going to slide it up out of the way. And the image that we see initially is actually going to be residing in the column that this is sitting in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the background away a little bit so we can see some of it. But I'm going to add the image next and we'll make it the shape that we actually want it. So I've gone into the color here on the background. I'm taking the opacity, this variegated slider down so we can actually see through it. And the reason it's gone pale is because we're looking through at a white background here. Let's go in and fix our column here the way we want it. So I'm going to get out of that module. I'm going to click on the row. I'm going to go to the little cog for the row. We're working on the second column here, which is the second one here, right hand one. I'm going to roll down. And in the background, I'm going to put an image. We've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern, or background mask. I'm going to use an image. Click on the little plus icon. Choose whatever image it is you want to put in the background of yours. I'll grab that one. There it is. We can see it there. Now what I want to do is make it the actual shape I want it by giving this column what they call a fixed height. And this is where the little bit of coding comes in. So I'm going to roll over to my advanced, still in the column settings. Make sure you're in the column and not in the row itself. Over to the advanced. I'm going to go down to custom CSS. And in the main element right here, I'm going to give it the height that we actually want it. So it stays this height at all times. I'm going to say height, colon, and we'll say 350 pix. 
And that looks about right. We're looking at the image here, not the call to action module, the actual image shape itself. Maybe a little too tall. Let's maybe try 300. Yeah, I think that's going to work shape wise. It's the sort of shape and aspect that I want to see there. That's fine. I think that should match our next door one too. Great. Fantastic. OK, while we're still in the advanced and on the main element here, I want to check it for mobile and tablet. And to do that, this is common to most Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing here, you'll see some icons appear. If there's a little cell phone type icon like there is here, we can click on it. And we can set different values for desktop that we're looking at now, tablet. Let's have a look at our picture there. Let's make sure it's the same regular aspect. I might want to make that a little deep on, on tablet. So I'm going to say height. Try 400 pixels for this one. Yeah, I think that's fine. The actual shape of the image we're looking at, remember, not the module that's on top. And let's just copy that. I'm going to put a semicolon on the end there. Control C to copy. And let's have a look on mobile. That actually works fine on mobile too. We've got enough height to contain our content there. So I'm going to leave that just like that. That's great. Let's switch back to desktop. And while we're in advance here, what we're going to do, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to slide this module up out of the way to the top here. But we don't want to see it when we slide it up at the top here. So we're going to still in the column, tell this column that we don't want to see any overflow. So still in advanced, we can close up custom CSS, go down to visibility. Here we've got horizontal and vertical overflow. If we switch these both to hidden, when we push that module up at the top and out of the way, we won't see it. Great. So let's save this. We'll save our row changes. And let's go back in now to our module and make it the way we want it. OK, let's pull this across a little bit closer. First thing I want to do is I'm going to give this a solid background so that when it rolls over the photo, it completely wipes it out. So call to action. Let's go down to our background down here. And I'm going to put in a straight purple. So when it rolls down, it's going to completely blank out the photo behind. If you want to see some of the photos, simply click left click on the color and you can pull your opacity slider, the variegated one, variegated one here, down a little bit and you can reveal a bit of the image through it if you like that. But I'm going to leave mine solid for this today. Fantastic. OK, well, we gave our column a height of 300. So let's do similar for these as well. I'm going to go over to design. I'm going to go down to sizing. With the module itself, it's actually got a height setting here that we can adjust. So I'm going to make mine the same on all devices, which was 300 on desktop. And we'll roll over, get that little phone icon up again. We'll switch it to tablet. We roll down so we can see. A little short. So I'm going to make this one roll this out of the way. I'm going to make this one about 350. It's a little short. I'm going to add a bit of padding on the top of this in a moment in tablet for you. In fact, I may as well do it while we're here. We're in sizing right now. If we close that up, we can go to spacing. And again, we want to make sure we're on tablet mode. So I'm going to hit the little icon, tablet mode. I'm going to add maybe 100 pixels padding to the top of this one on tablet mode. That's fine. And I'm going to put a huge amount on the bottom for every single one. And we're going to use this as a handle to trigger it. So basically, I'm going to put 600 pixels on, which will take it way down the bottom there. So when it slides up, we've got an invisible handle that we can click on to bring it back down. So let's say 600. 
as you can see that's filled that out nicely and we've got a load down here but because we've got our overflow set to hidden we're not seeing anything below our 300 there or 350 in this case let's just check we've got 600 on all our devices I'll make sure I've got 600 on the bottom on this one too and also on the mobile roll down so we can see yeah I want to take that padding off the top on mobile because it's too much or at least take it down to say 30 that'll work we can see everything there we have still got our 600 600 on the bottom on tablet 100 on the top desktop should be 600 on the bottom and nothing on the top fantastic great well now let's adjust it the way we want it now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to the content I'm going to go to my background I'm going to set a hover state and again this is common to most Divi modules if you hover over the dark writing you'll see some icons appear go to the thing that you want to affect our background in this case if there's a little arrow there click on the little arrow we can set a desktop state and a hover state now initially we're not going to see this at all because it's going to be up here so I don't want any background on there covering our image so I'm going to bring my opacity slider for that color all the way down when we're not hovering over it in desktop mode right here when we are hovering over it I want it to be full purple again just like that so that way we've got all this padding that's going to be coming down here to trigger it we don't want it to be purple in color until we actually hover over it great so we've done our colors and everything there now let's push it up out of the way and to do that we're going to go over to our design we're going to go back down to our spacing again okay so on desktop we know this is 300 we can actually and we know our tallest is 350 so let's take this up by 350 by giving it negative margin not padding margin at the top here I'm going to say negative 350 on all devices and when we hover it wants to be zero so let's go in there set the hover state to zero there we go so when we hover it's going to come back down when we're not it's going to be out of the way and we've got no background color right there now we've given it enough that it should cover all of our devices okay and now the time it takes to get from desktop to hover with Divi is 300 milliseconds pretty quick just under a third of a second if you want to slow it down or even speed it up we can do that by going over to our advanced go down to our transitions down here there's our 300 milliseconds right there you can either type in a value, hit the slider, or increment up and down with the arrows. I'm going to take mine up to about half a second. I want it to happen straight away. Don't want any delay when my mouse goes on there. And the speed curve I'm going to use for this is ease in, ease out. They're all subtly different, these, so do check them out. But for most of my hover effects, I like the ease in, ease out. So we've done everything correctly now. We should be good to go. Let's save our changes here. We'll save our page changes save draft or publish if you're ready and let's exit the visual builder and if we roll over there's our little boat image when I hover over our little purple call to action is going to come in and they can click on it and that's a great little eye-catching effect to have on your site let's just check it on mobile and tablet I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tool so if I hit F12 we've got an iPad Air here so if I click on this pops down just like that let's check it on an iPhone and there we have it it's still active from the last one if we click off of it it'll disappear back up and we click on it again to bring it back down so there you go guys there's a nice little call to action hover effect for you. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.